G'day, Michael here. Um, this video is really uh, as a result of, I've watched a few videos where people have described uh, FreeBSD as something much more efficient and, and uh, having quite some advantages over Linux. So what I've decided to do is actually drill down into you know, what the merits are of each system. And as you can see here, I'm only recording one of three monitors. I'll just do a, a screenshot. Okay, you can see the screenshot here. I've got actually two 4K monitors and one HD monitor. I don't know how well that shows up on the video. It's going to be a bit tricky, but um, I need to have the resolution to hide all the, uh, not to hide, to show all the bits and pieces I've got working. But anyhow, this first portion here is one screen which has got all my you know, controls and icons. The next one is the one that I'm recording that you can see my skull on. And this next one, pardon me, is a, uh, a blank screen. I'm not doing anything with it for the moment. All right, pardon me. All right, so you can see that there's a fair bit going on in the way of um, monitors. So that, that uses some memory. Also, I'm doing the screen recording. And you can see here NeoFetch is showing about three gigabytes of RAM being used on this base system. Now this base system is pretty heavy. I've got a number of different file services on there like NFS, uh, SMB. I've also got virtual machines installed. You know, there's a lot of lot of bits and pieces um, actually installed on this system. So this is a quite a heavily, you know, it's, a, it's a big installation of Linux Mint. Well, uh, and that's LMDE, not the Ubuntu based one, but the Debian based one. As you can see in the NeoFetch result, here this LMDE. Right, so that's what this base system is. So you can see there's uh, about three gigabytes of RAM being used. It's got 128 gigabytes of RAM, so I've got plenty of headroom to run virtual machines. That's part of the reason for this machine's you know, build is so it can run virtual machines without much penalty in the clients. Okay, so I'll close this. Let's um, get a virtual machine running. Now, as you can see, I've got a lot here uh, installed. I might actually delete that one. Uh, where are we now? Remove. Delete all files. And I might also remove that one. Delete all files. Hello. There we go. Okay, so I've just, you know, over yesterday and today, I've installed FreeBSD. Now, it took a bit of time. Um, it's my first time that I've installed FreeBSD with a graphical environment to something that I would actually use as a daily driver. Now, all I've got installed is the system, the graphics, and a GNOME desktop. I haven't got any client software whatsoever installed on it. And I've got a Debian system an installation here, which is a... Um, it's got a number of desktop environments, just so I can poke them with a stick. I've also just today upgraded to, to Bookworm, as that's sort of the, as of the last couple of weeks, that's become the current version of Debian. So there may be some leftovers from, you know, Bullseye. Actually, I might have started this one as um, earlier than Bullseye. You know, it's on for Bullseye. Can't think of it right now. But anyhow, it's uh, it may be one or two versions old. This is only. All these virtual machines are basically just for me to poke with a stick, do a little bit of software compiling, because uh, I've written a couple of utilities and so forth. And so having a few different systems to compile on uh, means I can make sure the binaries are, are happy and playing nice. All right, so let's actually start the FreeBSD. Go to the Debian, start it. So I'll see the boot speed. Now I've clicked into, oh well, I've clicked into the FreeBSD so it gives me the keyboard. Now this that one's... The Debian has um, now just started booting. As you can see, the Debian is quite a bit quicker to get off the ground, and that will be strictly the um, what do you call it, System D versus init. That is the reason why the Linux systems have gone towards init. Uh, now I've got a number of desktops installed here, like desktop environments. Um, I'm going to stick with the basic one. I'll just log in. And you can see the Debian was way ahead for speed. I started the the FreeBSD first. Now we'll run NeoFetch in both these systems. I'll log in with that. 
and I've even used the same background image on both of them so you can tell that I'm in fact using the same system let's run a system monitor and maybe uh, neo fetch Okay, so that's the official on that one. Release the keyboard. Not you. Release the keyboard. Okay, monitor. And you can see they're quite. They're quite identically set up. Actually, my head's in the way. Let's get Neo Fitch up on there too. Actually, that bit better. And I'm using a similar screen size. I mean, there might be a little bit of difference. But you can see here, uh, this is using 1100, 1112 megabytes. The FreeBSD is 1548 megabytes. So the FreeBSD is using quite a bit more than the latest and greatest Debian system. Right, it does have a lot more packages installed, which reflects on the fact that it's a heavier system. Um, the Debian system with all the extra de desktop environments, plus a few client software programs. Uh, 2859 is what I've got installed. On the FreeBSD, there is only 714. So I've got 4728, yes, that's somewhere around about four times as much soft, was four times as many packages, to be more accurate, on the, the Debian as I have on the FreeBSD but it boots more quickly and it uses less RAM with even though I've got much more installed now let's have a look at what's actually running on them let's get another uh, what there let's get a new window back up there so I'll go PS. Actually, okay, so that's you can see it's quite a listing there. What I might do is actually rep. Uh, see, so there's a hundred programs running, hundred tasks running. Let's do the same here. New window. Bang that up against the side. Same thing. And you can see there's actually quite a bit more running on the Debian. Okay, even though it's using less RAM, there's a lot more running. Let's just do a word count on that. Well, actually, a line count, really. Uh, grip. See. So there's 232 tasks running on the Debian, and yet it's using less RAM. So it gives you a bit of an indication of what's going on. Um, what? I'll list the block devices now, too, on that machine. Really, this video is pretty much only useful in a, um, a 4K playback or, you know, at least HD. Right, so we've only got, you know, the one block device active, this one. Just see how this one's going. We don't have LSBLK in. No, not found. I'll just uh, see if I can install LSBLK. I'm not familiar this much with uh, FreeBSD, so I'll just check that. EKG. Let's try it. LS. The LK, does such a thing exist? You can do it. But really, the two systems drive very similarly. I couldn't really say one's so much better to use than the other. Um, when you're using uh, GUI tools on Linux, they're much more developed than, than they are on FreeBSD. But having said that, I do have that. Okay, yes, let's install that. <coughs> um, now let's be okay. Okay, so the ZFS, there's a little bit of um, file system shuffling there with the ZFS management. Okay, so Really, all things said and done, from what I can tell here, they have a lot in common, both with memory usage and the sorts of tasks you can run on them. Now, going back to the main system that I'm running behind this virtual machine, so the actual uh, on metal installation, I've got quite a lot more going on. Let's just grab a um, 
terminal. And I'll just use that one to clear. Uh, so do that to it. No, not there. Okay, so I'm going to go um, LSB OK. There's a lot more block devices on this physical machine. What is that? So, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine active block devices. Um, so, I'm using VTRFS uh, on system. Oh, I have to be on as administrator, sudo. Okay, so you can see I've got a number of devices producing uh, BTRFS file systems. Now there's, there's, these two have been actually put together as a Div ID 3.6 terabytes. Okay, so I've got two really four terabyte drives. They happen to be SAS drives. Um, put together RAID level one as BTRFS, not using a RAID controller per se. Uh, where am I? Now, the, the thing that I like about the BTRFS, which of course ZFS does the same thing on. FreeBSD is that you've got snapshots that are quick and they don't really produce much of an overhead. The other thing we have with that pair, the reason why these two paired are paired as RAID level one is because that also gives protection against bit rot. So uh, I've read an article actually just earlier um, on into 2023 which is better, ZFS or BTRFS, and the conclusion was a bit inconclusive because there was advantages and disadvantages to both but what I would say is what I'm seeing as a whole with Linux is both its strength and its weakness and what I'm seeing as a whole with FreeBSD is its strength and its weakness um, the BSD is much slower in development which produces all sorts of um, predictability and stability advantages because what you learned you know, five or ten years ago is still pretty much completely relevant to now. But with Linux, the development is pretty fast, so there's a lot to keep up with. But with using the example of BTRFS, the BTRFS is basically now pretty much on par for different reasons to ZFS, depends on what you're looking for. Um, but if, I couldn't have said that five years ago. ZFS was obviously, you know, the I don't say. It was the original and the best of that kind of file system and it's had a long period of support and a long period of usage so it's well understood and it's widely deployed etc. It's, it's a very good system. BTRFS seems to be getting there pretty fast and the functionality and stability in that seems to be about on par depending on what you're looking for. Right, But I think moving forward BTRFS will produce more and more advantages. So maybe in uh, maybe 2030, BTRFS might be you know, a go-to as opposed to ZFS. Although I can't see ZFS going anywhere anytime soon because it's, yeah, they're both very good systems. Anyhow, going back to this, the main base system, the metal install is actually on a lot of hardware and that all costs a little bit of memory too because the BTRFS file system has overheads which is actually less than the ZFS overheads. BTRFS hasn't got quite as good a deduplication as the ZFS, well, yet, but that may change any minute. Um, yeah, so there's that. So what I might do right now, um, the, we'll create a new, I'll just MX Linux. Now, one of the many disadvantages people cite um, Uh, people's site is that ISO image. There we go. Da, 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 da. Next, let's give it some CPUs. Maybe uh, 
base memory, yeah, that'll be fine. And four CPUs, five, six CPUs, that should give it plenty. I mean, probably four would do actually, what am I doing? That'll be fine. Next, disk size. Next, I'm using a growing file system, so it won't use the disk space unless it actually has a reason to. So having a little bit more here, it gives me some overhead in case the, the file system needs to be a bit bigger for whatever reason. Anywho, let's go. Finish. I might just go through the process of checking the settings. System. Yeah, we don't need a floppy. There's two mouse. Display. Let's give it plenty of RAM because we can. Storage. Yep, that one's good. Audio, who cares? Network, I use bridged. That way it behaves like one of the computers on the network, as if they were physically connected to the cable, so I can understand how it all works with the local area network. Using that gets, gives kind of a sandboxing or a separate, somewhat disconnected from the network. But as a bridged, bridged adapter, it'll behave as if it was physically plugged into the, the network. Serial port. Nice. Yep, that'll do. Let's start that. So, what I'm going to do is start that in installer, so we can see the process of MX Linux. It's a still actually Debian, so the LMDE, which is the, the big system installed on the bare metal here. Uh, LMD is based on well, it actually is Debian with Linux Mint's front end, like this sort of shop front. It's decorations. Um, the Debian that I've got installed on that virtual machine that you've already seen running is Debian just only and what we're going to have now is a is a lightweight MX Linux where are we? that's popped up now the desktop here we go so we're booting it and we're going to install it straight away okay so it'll give us a bit of a desktop Yeah, it'll already resize. So it already knows the um, the graphics drive is already working, even on the live distro. So this is running live from the virtual CD. You can read that, whatever. Let's install. Let's just checking out the installation media. Yep. Yep. Yes, do that. That's fine next time zone Australia that'll do username long and complicated password You can see here on this live distro, we've got, um, if you if you can see it on a high resolution monitor, um, hard drive usage is low, C memory usage is low, CPU usage is low. Um, being the live distro, of course, it doesn't really show lot the hard drive usage because it's uh, loaded into RAM, so it's not really using a hard drive. It's showing the CPU usage around three or two to three percent. While that's doing that, let's log back into this guy. So this is FreeBSD. Linux. No. Debian. Okay. Now that's sitting around. Uh, be less than 2%. The FreeBSD is using very much the same kind of resources as this thing going to MX Linux. What I might do is move that down a little bit, move this guy up, down. There's a lot going on on this screen. So you can see I'm running the Debian, it's happy. Um, I 
I find typically that the Debian was actually idling better than the um, FreeBSD, but I'm splitting hairs. It's like half half a percent. It's, it's so it could be just something that moment that I'm you know, missing. So installation's just about finished. So basically, MX Linux is Debian with, it's deliberately like a, a compact desktop, like a minimum desktop, right? Linux Mint, the LMDE environment that is running on the base machine here is more of a top end desktop, fully featured, etc. And of course, Debian, you build up or down to whatever you like, rather like you do with FreeBSD. But um, one thing I like about the BSD is when you're installing it, you've kind of got to put the pieces together more deliberately, which gets you to understand a few more of the moving parts in the system. Let's finish that. Reboot, it'll do that. Please remove the disk, it's been done. Um, whereas um, the Linux installers tend to do a reasonably good job of installing, you know, a useful, the moment it's booted up, I mean, even the live distro is, is ready to do something. As you can see, I've just installed MX Linux while I've been making this video. Um, I might deliberately leave all the ums and ahs in this video so you can see the time that's taking. I don't need to see that. Close. What I might do, there is this package manager icon here, password, let it load. Um, so it's basically running Synaptic Package Manager, which is a reasonably good, it's an older, but a good GUI-ish um, package manager. But of course we can run from the command line, where's the terminal around here? Let's see, terminal might add that to the panel. So alternatively, oh, I don't like these colours. Colors we're going to use there. Put uh, on black. No, didn't like that. Edit references. Colors. Yeah, it's a bit easier. All right, so sudo su gets me on as administrator yep Apt, update so because it's the first in, um, boot after installation there'll be a bucket of things to upgrade as you can see the way I'm dressed it's cold in my office right now it's basically um, well into winter now in Australia. As I was saying, one of the things I kind of like about the FreeBSD is the way you put things together. Now the the problem I've had with FreeBSD, which I haven't been able to work out how to get over the top of it, let's open a browser. I've got two servers on this, uh, two, maybe three servers on this network, but I'm using SMB for it. Okay, let's try this one. SMB colon forward slash forward slash forward slash nothing um, SMB colon 
Ryzen.local. Right, so let's do the same on the Debian. Actually, I'll get that update happening. There's a whole heap to upgrade, so I'll get that rolling. Right, go back to the Debian. SMB, following forward slash forward slash. Work, what have we got wrong? SMB, column, yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, that's the Ryzen. And I've got a number of So there's that. So that mounts quite easily. Go back to here. Uh, as I was saying, the I've had trouble trying to mount the Samba shares using FreeBSD. And what it is, the BSD, uh, they don't support Samba 4. What is Samba 4? Sorry, SMB 4 and SMB 3. I only support SMB 1.1, I think was the highest. And I also had tried the same, excuse me, also had the same with um, Ghost BSD, same problem. So I was unable to mount SMB shares, which is basically Windows share. So, um, yeah, it's quite happy to mount NFS, but I don't really want to administer NFS networking as well as. SMB networking if I don't need to, so FreeBSD gives me that bit of pain. Um, that's one thing I have not been happy with. The other thing is, I use a commercially available piece of software called Vericad, and I can install it on Ubuntu, Linux, any of the, the uh, Debian uh, derivatives seem to work just fine. So, there's a lot of different systems well, they're not really that different, I guess. Basically, this Debian line of system will install my software. Um, will install Vericad. And I can use both Snap and Flatpak on those same systems. Now, Snap and Flatpak are, in the Linux world, a way of getting around all the different systems out there. If you use a Flatpak, and you've got Flatpak installed on your system, the software that's written for Flatpak will run on any system that's got Flatpak installed. It's kind of like a um, like a container system for the the software. Um, and Snap is Ubuntu's own uh, equivalent. They've got their own, you know, generally usable binary install. We're about 46% through the full upgrade on this system. Again, see how it's behaving. 1656 megabytes being used. That's what this one's doing. 1337. So there'll be this one's got 856 megabytes of cache, whereas the FreeBSD's only got 293 gigabytes of cache, but it's actually using 923 gigabytes of. RAM directly, whereas Debian's. Am I reading that right? 922 plus 293, something doesn't add up. Oh, no, that's right. 1656. So that doesn't look quite right. 1337. 
that might be a rounding, 1.5. Interesting. Let's do that hard way. And three buffers. That's using no swap space. That one's using no swap space. Total, it's free, okay, yep. So we've got one got nineteen and a half gigabytes free out of twenty one and a half gigabytes. So it's using about a gigabyte there and cached it's showing about seven hundred and twenty five megabytes. Is that what we're seeing here? I might be slightly asynchronous for that. Okay, so that appears to be adding those two together. The caching. So one point yes, yeah, one point seven. Not quite. Yes, yeah, so the one point five here, it seems to have been adding the, the caching. Here it seems to be listing it separately. Which is a bit weird. Let's see if we can do the same here. same thing, uh, pain. Doesn't appear to be the same layout there, so that's... In any case, what we're seeing here is 919 plus the 293. Run that again. Well, I might actually see if we can drop the cache on that. Sys CTL VM drop underscore caches. I think it was one. I hope it's the same. It doesn't know. Sys CTL. Doesn't know. Okay. Hang on. Pretty slow.
Right, so I might also install Firefox. Hopefully that the syntax of that's just fine the way I've got it. Package install Firefox. Yep. 114. What version of Firefox is in this one? So it appears to be a newer version on the FreeBSD. This, it, but the uh, version on Debian is extended support release, so it's more of a stable version. So it kind of is the opposite of what you expect from FreeBSD. So the the uh, Debian is the more stable or more conservative of the two systems, which is interesting. At least for Firefox. SMB issues. Fuzz this off, still going. Alright, unfortunately, I've still got to wait for the MX to finish installing, or finish the upgrading, I should say. How old was that file? from February, so it's not that old. Yeah, so I guess what I'm coming to with all of this is that the arguments I've heard in favour of FreeBSD over Linux are not as relevant as I expected them to be. Another example that I find quite interesting, if we go man say cp, so the manual page for the, the copy command, put them side by side, so this screen of course is a Debian, this screen is of course the FreeBSD. I know this is all very cluttered and I don't know how to make this better, but um, what we have with the BSD is like two pages, that's nearly the end of the page. Yeah, so it's about two and a half pages at that level. One, that's two, three, yeah a good three pages. Okay, now what I do like about the BSD man pages is they give examples. There are no examples on the um, Linux version, but there are actually a lot more options. So let's go back to uh, there. We've got, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 options. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
What is that? 24, 25. Did I get that right? Suffix. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I think that's it. Yeah, so, no oh, version, who cares about that? All right, so we've got twice as many options-ish in the Linux version of CP. Let's just do another one. So quick, man, say, oh, I don't know, LS. So you've got one page, two pages, three pages, four pages, five, six, seven, eight examples. You've got examples in there, so it's eight pages like that. Quit, man, Ellis. The Linux page is a little bit more dense. You can see the font's slightly smaller, I think. Is it? Yeah, it's slightly smaller. So anyway, one, two, three, four, five. So it's five pages. How many options have we got? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, that's file type. Oh, there you go. File type. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. I think that'll be it. Sixty. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So, about two thirds the options. I mean, I, it's not a very good way of doing it, but I, that's the best I can do quickly, right? So, you can see that the commands on the Linux, Linux, even on the basic command lines like ls and cp, and those sorts of commands are pretty low level, two, two character commands, and the Linux uh, equivalent is actually it's got more features even the basic command line instructions they have generally got more features um, okay that's been done so let's reboot that but you also see on that that install of the MX Linux it's already got a massive amount of upgrades even in two months since it was uh, released so there's a lot more updates, upgrades, whatever, on a Linux thing, partially because that's, um, like, there's faster development, but there's also more security patches, more quickly done. They want to tell you in various different places that the BSDs are more quick at security updates. Well, it's a bit hard to put a handle on it because if you've got a smaller feature set, there are less security updates needed. 
Um, so it, that's a bit hard to argue. Linux is definitely more feature packed for a given piece, any given piece of software. So it's a bit hard to compare the updates. Numerically, it's it's not a fair thing. Um, depends how you see that. But anyway, I, I see that as not. Um, let's do another desktop. Don't like that background, so. That's just been good. Right, so it's saying 11% of the hard drive is being is used. Memory is 5% in use, and CPU basically zero. What have we got on this guy? File systems. Uh, 4.7 gigabytes. So that's the installed system. Here's 4.7 gigabytes. Let's go to the MX Linux. Let go. Terminal. Do Neo fetch. We do. We do. All right. Now that is saying it's using 907 megabytes, so it's less than either of the other two. It's using XFCE. It's 5.10 kernel. What's this guy using? Another terminal. Actually, here we go. 6.1 kernel. So the Debian install bookworm is obviously a newer kernel. Uh, MX is using an older kernel. Is there anything else meaningful here to work with? No. So as far as being lighter, MX Linux, which is basically Debian, but with a trimmed down desktop, so it's not burning excess RAM, is under a gigabyte fully functional. Of course, if you open Firefox or something, that'll go out the window. Let's just open Firefox just to prove the point. Come on. Right, so let's see what that's saying now. Even with Firefox running, it's 1313 megabytes. All right, let's just get Firefox running on this guy. Uh, Firefox, there it goes. Okay, so now we're at two and a half gigabytes. So functionally, we're not doing anything different, I don't think. So I might just double check. Close that. Close that. So we're running the same stuff. Two point five gigabytes. Yeah, 1.3 gigabytes. So the MX Linux is running a bit over half what the FreeBSD has got. Now I don't have much more installed on the FreeBSD. Let's have a look at what programs we actually do have installed, just so I'm not telling you lies. So this is what we have installed. But not running, just installed. It's nonetheless a fair spread. What have we got on MX Linux? Okay, so let's do accessories. Games. Graphics. It's got LibreOffice in it. Thunderbird. Those tools. Yeah. Office. Libre office settings. Do you? Okay. 
общем, ГТФ. So 12%, so 6 gigabytes there in use. In use, come on. Uh, FreeBSD is running at 9 gigabytes. So, yeah, I, I don't see the leanness, I don't see the efficiency, and I don't see the speed of FreeBSD. Now, seriously, I've only got the base system, uh, a GNOME desktop environment, XORG, and Midnight Commander, Joe. I think I installed NeoFetch, and I've installed LSBLK. So that, that's all I've installed, nothing more than that. So, um, I don't see what is being said about FreeBSD actually holding water. The only advantage, which is a mixed blessing, is ZFS. And the other advantage that I see, that is, is valid, as you put the system together, you see how the bits work, at least to some extent. You don't get to know everything about the system, but you understand how things you know, interplay a little bit more. Whereas the Linux, the MX Linux installer was just like, yes, no, maybe, done, right? Whereas FreeBSD, there's actually a little bit more hands-on. There's about, I don't know, a dozen steps on what MX Linux did with, like, a click. So, yeah. If you see that as an advantage, that's great. If you don't see it as an advantage, that's great. Best tool for the job. Do what you got to do for yourself. But I would suggest that if you want to go under the bonnet on Linux, you can do it exactly the same as you can on FreeBSD. If you want to just stand back and be like a, a conductor of an orchestra, uh, you can do that better on Linux than you can on FreeBSD. So, there's that. Well, I guess that's all I have to say about the subject. If you have different thoughts, and if, if I've missed something or I've misinterpreted something, or you feel strongly that you know there's something to add, by all means, feel free to, to make a, a, a comment, ask a decent question, whatever. Be nice to each other, though, in the comments. Well, that's it from me. Bye for now.